In the world of C programming, there is a very interesting phenomena which is called STB single file libraries. They were coined by Sean Barrett, a legendary programmer who's also known for working on the engine for Thief 1. Let's take a look at some of them. Let's pick something that works with images. For example, STB image write. It's a, again, single file. You need to download only a single file. Let's quickly do that. Let's do wget that file and quickly download it. Here it is. Let's create a program called image c and let's literally include this library like that the next thing after including the library we have to do we have to define a macro that goes like this the name of the library capitalized underscore implementation after that uh, let's create an entry point main return zero the usual stuff and let's define the pixels of an image that we want to generate so we're going to be using rgb 32 so that means we need u in 32 underscore t so here is the pixels and let's create some very basic test image like two by two or whatever define a pixel that is black another pixel which is red so let's create another row and just swap them around so we have a little bit of a checker pattern let's go inside of the library let's find the function that writes an image this library supports a lot of different formats png bmp tgi jpeg you name it so let's grab png let's generate png let's generate a file called image png the width of the file is going to be two and the height is going to be two the amount of components is four because it's RGBA32, so let's put 4 in here. The data is the pixels that we defined, and a stride is width, which is 2, but in bytes, so that means we have to multiply it by the size of uin32. The function itself may return false in case of error, so let's actually assert that everything is okay. For the assert, we have to include assert, and for the uin32, we have to include stdint. Let's go ahead and build this program. cco image image.c. And as you can see, it builds, and if I try to run, this program it doesn't say anything but it generated image.png and if you open it you can't really see anything but if you zoom in very very closely you can see our two by two image in here and it is a proper png right so it's a png image data two by two rgba non-interlaced it's a proper png and mind you this is a self-contained library it doesn't have any dependencies except libc and what's surprising actually is that it's very small it's only one 1724 lines of code. I suppose this is because it probably had codes a lot of parameters of the format, but it works, it can generate images, so that's pretty cool. And what's up with this macro? Let's try to investigate. So if you don't understand why a certain thing is done in a certain way, try to do it in the opposite way. What if we go ahead and remove this macro? What is going to happen? Let's try to rebuild this program. And it compiles, but it fails with a linking error. It cannot find implementation of the function we're calling. How usually C code is organized? Let's create a separate program called main.c. Let's include std io and an entry point. As usual, return zero, of course. Let's define a function, something like hello, which accepts a name. And that function is going to basically greet that name, saying hello, that name. And in the main program, let's greet the world, as usual. Let's compile this program. I'm going to just replace image with main. And it compiles, and let's try to run this program, and it says, hello, what? Ah, I forgot to put the name in here, Ig ignore that. Hello world. You have to remember that C is a stinky old language. That means you can't put hello in here. This is not going to compile, because you're trying to call a function that is not defined yet. C is a single pass compiler. It's coming from the times where people didn't know how to make more complicated compilers, or maybe even couldn't, because the computers were not powerful enough to do anything super complicated, so it was all like single pass. To bypass these limitations, in C you have function declarations, which means that you basically make a promise, listen, I'm going to define, I'm going to implement implement this function later. For now, do not error out on any of the calls to these functions. It's sort of a promise, it's a declaration. This line is called function declaration, and this line is called function definition or sometimes function implementation. Declaration, implementation. And if you try to compile that, it now works. Traditionally, all of the declarations are put into 
header files. In our case, let's say it's going to be hello.h. Let's put this declaration in here. And then we include the header file into the main program. You have to keep in mind that include literally copy paste the source code of the file. I notice an interesting thing that some people, even if the program in C and C++ extensively, may not know that include literally copy paste the content of the file. And this is because C doesn't have a module system. C++ has an attempt at module system. I don't know how successful it is. I don't really program in C++ anymore. But C doesn't have it and all we have is just concatenation of the files. So you have to keep that in mind. And the implementations are usually put into C files. Let's create hello.c and let's put it in here. And we probably need to include std.io for the printf. And usually traditionally you also include the header file. Just in case you have several functions that cross refer to each other. So you kind of want to forward declare them once and don't think about the order of the implementation. So if you try to compile that, it will fail with the linker error. So that means you have to provide the implementation like this. You're also supposed to put some include guard in the header files, something like pragma once, but that's kind of besides the point of the video. The idea of the STB style single file libraries is that you combine together header and the C file. Let's try to do that. Let's go ahead and simply copy paste the implementation into the header. So now header contains implementation and on top of that, it probably needs STDIO. And now you take all of the implementations and you put them behind the guard. If defined, let's say, hello implementation, only then include the implementations. Hello implementation. In the main program, we just include that H. And if we try to compile it, but without the hello.c, only by included hello.h, you will get a linking error. But if you define hello, implementation, it will compile just fine. So that's what this implementation macro is about. What's the point of doing it this way? Well, you get a single file. Single file logistically is much easier to handle. You just copy paste it into your project and you're done. By default, the file behaves like a header. So that means it is very easy to include it all around your project without worrying about implementation collisions. And then you carefully choose the place where your implementation implementations go. For example, you may put implementations somewhere at the bottom of the main translation unit and include it like this with the implementation macro. It gives you a lot of flexibility. If your program is very simple, just a single file, you can just include it as is. If it's more complicated, you have a control where exactly you place implementations. And furthermore, this approach allows you to even create separate binary libraries out of such files. Let me demonstrate you what you have to do. You have to try to compile this header, but it is not going to work because GCC, the compiler of Linux, tries to identify the language by the extension and the extension of H means that you're going to try to pre-compile the header and we don't want to do that. We want to compile it as a C file. So we have to put XC in here. Since we want to compile a binary object, we have to say do not link it with anything, just produce a binary object. And what we can do from the compilation command line, we can actually define fine hello implementation macro so what it will do it will create an object file from that single file library and here it is so now if our main program does not define implementations and we try to compile it it is going to fail with the linking error but now if we add our object file it is going to work. This format improves the logistics of the library without sacrificing its flexibility. You are in control where all of these implementations go and you can do whatever you want. This idea became so popular that we have a lot of STB style single file libraries implemented outside of the original STB repo. And if you think that this approach doesn't scale and big and serious libraries will never ship as a single file, let me present you mini audio. It's an audio playback and capture library written in C in a single source file. It is insanely powerful, supports all of the major platforms and all of the major sound backends on all of these platforms. It is a single file. If you try to open it in GitHub, you won't be able to do that because
because it's too big. It weighs almost 4 megabytes. You can only open it raw. Let's try to download it. I'm gonna put it in here and wget. Let's open it up. And the size is almost 100,000 lines of code. 95,000 lines of code. And people use it. Rayleap, for example, depends on this library for sound support. And this is amazing. In the age of NPM slop, you have a library format which you can just download and put into your project and it just works. Can your JavaScript do that?